Hey everyone, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. And in today's video, I will be showing you the process of me painting this ceramic bowl that was a Christmas gift for my mom. I haven't really done any ceramic painting content on this channel yet. I do it a lot, so I thought it would be fun to film the process of one, and maybe you guys will find it interesting. I love painting ceramics. It's so therapeutic and calming to me. And after painting this sunflower dish and seeing how much my mom loves it and uses it, I thought I would make her a bigger bowl for our kitchen island to put her fruit on instead. I've got all the bisquare, bisquare meaning the fired clay pieces that I'm painting from Color Me Mine and in this video I will be using their underglazes to paint this bowl. I first started by sketching the sunflowers on tracing paper and positioning it where I wanted it on the bowl. I taped that sketch to some transfer paper and proceeded to transfer the sketch onto the bowl itself. Any kind of pencil or carbon type of material will burn off in the kiln once it's fired. So that makes it really handy to sketch out a plan first. Then I took a photo of the actual bowl itself and brought it into Photoshop and just started coloring a really scribbly quick sketch onto it. I do this mostly because since the paints look much different while you're painting it, it's really hard to improvise and mix colors accurately as you go, like you would be able to in normal like acrylic painting for example. So I take the reference tile of each of the paint colors once it's fired and created a more accurate color plan of what I wanted for the bowl in Photoshop. This helps me visualize the colors next to each other and helps me to make sure there's enough contrast between each flower for example. After I had the plan to refer to, I started basically playing color by number since all the paints are numbered and just being sure to keep track of the coats that I do for everything. I feel like it's also important to mention that what I'm using to quote unquote paint this bowl isn't actually a kind of paint at all because when I'm brushing the colors on, it actually isn't the final form. You can use paint such as acrylic on this bisquare, but I wanted it to be food safe and functional and also more durable. And to do that, the bisque needs to be fired again to transform the colors and make it into a more permanent glass coating. If you fire bisquare with acrylic paints on it, it will burn off completely because acrylics cannot stand heat to that degree. If you want to learn more about clay and bisque and underglazes, etc. I'll leave a link to bisque imports frequently asked questions for you to learn more. For simplicity's sake, I will be referring to the underglazes as paint and the action of applying the underglazes to the bisqueware as painting because it's just easier to understand to be honest. And I'm using paint brushes and stuff, so there you go. For these underglazes, it's really important to get a solid good three coats on everything. That just makes sure that the color is as rich as it can be and you won't see all of the brush strokes you make. That bisque really likes to soak in every little bit of the moisture so it does dry pretty quickly and makes it easier to do three coats. So that means I had to paint every single color from light to dark three times and I'm gonna paint everything from light to dark mostly just because if I make a mistake I can always cover up any of it with the darker colors that I'm gonna do next if that makes sense. But yeah although it took a while to do three whole coats every single time. Lots of paint brushes and cleaning the paint brushes and drying them off and then using the paint and then cleaning it off and then drying it off and over and over and over again. But I really do think it's kind of a satisfying process. I do think it's kind of nice to just be able to sit back and mindlessly paint for the hours and hours and hours it took me to paint this and just have YouTube in the background or podcasts or anything like that. I just treat it as a little bit of some me time. So that's why I think it's one of my favorite therapeutic art activities. And it is really satisfying to see as I paint the bigger areas how fast the paint dries and since it is in time lapse you can really see that transition and I think it's really pretty interesting and fun to watch. So I hope you guys stick around and and enjoy the process.
since I did a really solid three coats over the whole thing, I was worried that dipping it into the clear glaze before firing it would be too much and cause the colors to crawl, which is the result of too much glaze on the bisque. When there's too much glaze built up, it makes it harder for it to adhere to the clay surface and it leaves little bare patches of bare bisque once it's fired. Obviously that's not ideal, especially if I want it to be functional and food safe so that there's no porous areas where water can soak in and potentially hold that moisture. Luckily, this specific underglaze I'm using is glossy on its own when it's fired, and as long as enough is applied, it shouldn't need a full extra coat of clear glaze over the whole thing. Painting ceramics is never a bulletproof science, and although you can get pretty good at predicting the outcome, there is always that window of error that is possible during every kiln fire. Depending on where it is in the kiln, how slowly it's cooled, and how fast it heats up, anything can really change the outcome of the kiln pieces. And although it's way easier to monitor in the electric kilns versus a fire pit kiln, for example, there is always still that room for error. For example, there are these little parts of the paint that started to bubble up a little bit in the flowers. And luckily, I think it looks pretty interesting and my mom likes it, so that's good. But that is something I didn't really plan for or expect. As I paint more and more ceramics, I'll get better at it and it'll be easier for me to judge how much paint is too much paint and where I need to put more paint, etc, etc. I've taken several ceramic courses in college and I just love the whole process of getting your hands dirty and really creating something cool with that muddy clay and really the whole process from start to finish plus learning about the science of clay is really fascinating to me so I would love to make more ceramic related videos in the future maybe showing you what I've created in those courses all of my clay creations have an animal in it somehow and I'm just now realizing that anyway let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing in the comments below because I spent many 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 days and nights and sometimes both consecutively on those sculptures and I still have them and I still love them and I still look at them every day. If you made it this far, be sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video every Friday and I'd love to have you come along on my YouTube journey. My goal is to get monetized by 2022 and I really think we can do it. This video technically has nothing to do with animals, but since I am painting sunflowers, I thought it would be the perfect excuse to share an article I found of all the bugs and critters that murder and eat sunflowers and their seeds. This isn't the first time I've drawn or painted sunflowers. In fact, I drew my little ferial critter in sunflowers as a mixed media experiment in my sketchbook, in one of my sketchbook tours, and I used that same drawing to inspire the illustration that I did on the cover of that sketchbook that I'll pop an image right here for you to see really quickly, but I'll have that video so you can see the full process linked in the description, as well as a little side card link and an annotation at the end of this video so you can click right there and watch it after this one. Anyway, I do hope you guys enjoy this video and if you made it this far please 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 leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever painted any ceramics have you ever made any ceramic sculptures I feel like hand building with clay is probably one of my favorite things to create because it's just so hands-on you know I guess literally and wheel throwing is really fun as well so let me know if you have any experience with that I haven't been able to do it since college because I don't have a wheel but that was a fun process as well also let me know if you want to see what I did sculpt and some of my wheel thrown projects in the past and if you want more ceramic related content in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in next Friday's video.